guys, what's going on? This is Travis P. Love and I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Well guys, I had an opportunity to spend several weeks with the Ruger Precision Rifle chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, mounted up on the top we have a Burris Eliminator 3, uh, 4 to 16 by 50 powered laser range finding holdover dot scope, okay, to try to sum it up the best I can. And uh, I really had a, had a great time at the range with this rifle. So I just want to share my experiences with you shooting this rifle, you know, if I feel like it's got some potential for being a long range precision instrument, my experiences with the scope and so on. So I had a buddy who got a hold of me and asked me if I could just get this thing zeroed so he could just take it out, shoot it, have a good time with it. Once you get this Eliminator 3 set up, it's, it's almost too easy to hit what you want to hit, and I'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, before we do anything else, let's just go over the basic specifications of this rifle. What do you need to know about it if you're thinking about investing in one of these? Because this package alone, you're looking at, at a decent investment in cash or money. So let's go and talk about the specifications, and uh, we will go from there. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and hand shoot this one. Let's go ahead and go from the back to the front, talk about all the different features that this uh, rifle has. So what do you need to know about it? All right, so first of all, you do have the Ruger Precision stock on the back, which offers uh, comb height adjustability as well as length of pull. Very easy to adjust. It. All you have to do is push down on this little lever right here, pull down on it, pull out on it. These are actually have a uh, spring tension on them, so when you turn them, you can loosen the bolt, which allows you to move them forward and back uh, pretty much however you want to. I had no trouble finding a comfortable position with this stock. You can take all this off if you want to, and you've got a traditional, I'm assuming, mil-spec buffer tube, which allows you to put uh, basically any kind of AR-15 stock on there that you want, as long as it's got the mil-spec buffer tube. It does have a latch system, which we'll show you in a little bit, that allows you to fold the stock around, makes it for a little bit easier transport, because it is a fairly lengthy uh, rifle when you get down to it. You do have a, a standard AR pistol grip on here which would allow you to mount whatever you wanted to if you wanted to go mag pull or whatever you want it's there we do have an ambidextrous safety lever okay obviously on both sides uh, you do have the Ruger precision uh, trigger system which allows adjustability from 2.5 to 5 pounds uh, the bolt itself I mean the mechanism very smooth uh, very easy to actuate now this is a little dirty because I have not cleaned it since I got back from the range but um, again the bolt had no trouble running it whatsoever very smooth easy to use You've got the uh, Picatinny rail up on the top, which makes it very simple to add whatever kind of optic you want to. You've got a free float M-Lock hand guard, and I did put a section of, of, of M-Lock rail on the front there, uh, Picatinny rail, so that I'd be able to mount a bipod if I wanted to, and uh, Black Rifle Coffee, obviously. And then at the end, you've got their hybrid muzzle brake, which I will attest works really, really well. It is awesome. I mean, recoil was not... A problem with this rifle. Um, let's get into just a few more of the details, you know, about the size and length and so on, and uh, we will go from there. Oh, hey, real quick before I forget, magazines 762 by 51. It does take your standard uh, Magpul 308 magazines, and I can't off the top of my head remember what the code is for these, if they're what the names are. But again, if you've got your Magpul, uh, magazines are readily available. Again, 762 by 51, not a problem. I'm assuming it would take other magazines that fit that standard that these conform to, because when you get into AR10s and, and 308s and so on, there's there's a few different standards that you follow. Magazine release, the paddle is generous, very easy to read no problems whatsoever and uh, let's go ahead and move on to those specs okay and just a little bit more about those magazines you do get two of those included with the rifle when you buy it uh, the magazine the rifle itself is constructed from 7075 t6 aluminum you do have a 24 inch uh, cold hammer forged barrel which uh, it, the nice thing about that is a barrel is easily replaceable by a competent gunsmith that has a proper head spacing tool so you can shoot the heck out of this thing and not have to worry about wearing it out uh, your MSRP that you're looking at is uh, $15.99 uh, capacity is going to be 10 rounds with the included magazines. Uh, the model number is 18029, the model that you see here. Your uh, upper receiver and one-piece bolt are precision CNC machine from pre-hardened 4140 chrome molly steel to minimize distortion. Again, the finish all the way around is type 3 hard coat anodized. Uh, the twist is uh, 1 and 8 inch right hand twist. The thread pattern is 5 8 of an inch dash 2024. Uh, the weight is 10.7 pounds. It is a heavy beast when you throw that big scope up on top of there. It's not a lightweight package, but again, it also aids in stability. <clears throat> the height is 7.30 inches without any kind of optics. The overall length is 46.75 inches with a 24 inch barrel. Uh, length of pull is between 12 and 15.50 inches. Folded length is 35.60 inches. If you have a 36 inch case, you should be able to make that work. The width is only 3.30 inches, and like I said before, your MSRP is uh, $15.99.
Okay, so guys, I've done a couple videos on the optics before, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the Eliminator 3, but I mean, just shooting it and so on, we'll get there. Mounting it, this seems a little bit crude, but we do have a riser plate because I was not able to clear the uh, handguard with the scope. So we do have a one-inch riser plate, which really did not affect the overall use. It was not a problem whatsoever. And uh, we did get that properly mounted and it's set to go. Ammunition that I used was the Hornady Superformance Ammo. This is 129 grain with the SST bullet. Um, this was the only ammo that was in the cartridge guide as well as online that had the information that I needed to plug into the scope that I, and knowing that it was going to work. So let me just explain this to you in the easiest way I can. You've got a drop number, okay? The bullet drop number is the amount of drop that the bullet's going to display at 750 yards. Uh, you have to punch that drop number in the scope, okay? You also have to punch in your ballistic coefficient, but here's the deal. Where I'm at, which is 2,300 feet, you've got a different ballistic coefficient for the ammunition. And uh, by running it through the formula with the given information that I had in the book, I was able to do that. The problem is, is if you get other ammunition and you want to calculate that ballistic coefficient per thousand feet, there's a certain factor or number that you need, and you're probably going to have to call the ammunition manufacturer to get that number. Every ammo has its own difference or factor. In other words, for every thousand feet that you go up in the air, there's a factor that says your ballistic coefficient is going to decrease by a certain amount. Well, I only had the information for this ammunition in this book, and I did not feel like calling a bunch of companies and trying to get a bunch of numbers in. This stuff performed really well. Um, let's just talk about shooting before we say anything else about the scope. Um, shooting it, okay, accuracy. You know, I did find it 100 yards. I was shooting out freezing temperatures. Yeah, these are my excuses. I did have some occasional wind that was pushing the barrel. Um, after about three hours out there at the range, it was a little hard to maintain my focus. I mean, I'm not usually out in these kinds of conditions. Um, the Eliminator 3 performed just fine. Um, I did notice that I was shooting to the left at 300 yards. It wasn't until after I went back and reviewed my raw footage, after I've already posted all the videos, that I realized that I did not do the parallax adjustment at 300 yards. So had I done that, it probably would have brought my shots back and they would have been a lot closer than they were. But at four and 500 yards, I was able to peg steel with no problems at all. I basically, you push a button on the eliminator, it's gonna give you the yardage. Um, it also gives you a dot that tells you where your shot is gonna go, where your bullet's gonna land, your trajectory. And you put it there and that's what you hit. It was almost too easy. I, I, I basically didn't even really have to focus or concentrate to hit the steel at uh, four and 500 yards. And I didn't take it past it further because I did run out of ammunition and it was getting really cold. But it is supposedly able to take this uh, rifle out to 1200 yards with this scope. And so again, just the scope, we'll kind of take a look at it, bringing it back here a little bit. Um, it's fine, it's about a $1,400 scope when you pick it up. Uh, they are pricey, you do have your parallax adjustment, you have a button on both sides that you can use. Here's the thing about the button, when you push it, it's going to move your rifle if you're on a bipod or if you're on a uh, lead sled. So after I pushed the button, I had to readjust every single time. So again, it is very hard to shoot consistently at long distances, but anybody that does any kind of precision shooting knows this. There's this factor of difficulty that you're going to run into. Now, the other thing I was not able to test is what kind of grouping does this thing pull off at four and 500 yards? You know, I was able to hit an eight or 10 inch, 10 inch plate, and I was also able to hit a human sized silhouette uh, out to 500 yards. So if that's what you do, if that's what you wanna do, you know, I would really like to try to test this thing with on some paper and see how the grouping is. Uh, the trigger, like I said before, we are empty, okay? We'll go ahead and pull back over time. Again, the bolt, not a problem at all. Okay, so the trigger mechanism, again, you can see you've got this little blade safety right here. And it almost has kind of a two-stage feel to it. Like, you can feel it creep just a little bit, and then you hit a bit of a wall, and that's it, and it breaks. I do love the trigger on this thing. It's absolutely fantastic. And uh, again, just a little bit about the scope. It does have a lifetime warranty regardless of owner. You have a little dial pad right here. Your battery goes right here. You've got your uh, your windage and your elevation knobs up on the top and the side. Very easy to make the adjustments. And so yeah, it really was that easy to program. Um, to fold the stock around, you've got a little button right here that you push. Okay, and you push that in, it's gonna bring the stock around. And uh, again, I do like the idea that you can put any kind of stock on there that you want to, especially if you don't like this or you don't need it or you wanna go with something maybe a little bit lighter. Uh, take out the bolt, you just pull back, pull up, and there is a release button on the side right here that you push, and that will let your bolt come out. Okay, so we'll kind of take a look at the bolt. It's probably a little bit dirty. It is a fairly good-sized bolt. You've got your three lugs on the front right there. Go. Let's go ahead and bring this in so you can get a better look at it. 
Um, it does have tools that are kept in the back of it that you use for bolt disassembly, as well as making your adjustment to your trigger. Um, it is starting to show quite a bit of wear, and I only put 40 rounds through it. Um, it did have a little bit of wear on it before, but I'm thinking maybe the previous owner was maybe testing it out a little bit, doing some dry firing with it and so on. But uh, again, it's a nice, really nice design. Um, again, very lightweight, uh, very robust and very well built nonetheless. So I'll put that back in. All right, so, you know, as a precision rifle, again, you read stories about how these things have the potential to basically overlap shots, you know, out to many different distances. When it comes to the scope, I love the scope. It's a lot of fun to mess around with. Um, if you know where the dot's gonna go and you have it dialed in good enough, I would say it would be safe for hunting. You know, you'd wanna take an ethical shot. You'd wanna run it out basically as far as you'd feel comfortable doing so. Um, you know, 6.5 Creedmoor delivers a tremendous amount of energy and somebody might be comfortable taking a shot at 500 yards. Uh, you know, you really got to start to take windage into consideration. Um, and it does have, by the way, a windage gauge that tells you approximately where you should be counting for the windage to detect, uh, which way to shoot into to compensate for, for, for the wind pushing your bullets. And so, again, if you learn how to use the eliminator, once it's set up, it's a piece of cake. But if you really look at all the potential for what it can do, um, it, it really can take you far. And I was having a great time. Just wish I wouldn't have ran out of ammo. I was having a great time just pointing the dot, pulling the trigger, and hitting the steel. I mean, it was really was that easy. So um, anyway, you know, I had a great time with it. It was fun. Um, I think it would be an excellent building block for somebody who wants to get into uh, precision rifle shooting. You know, it's pretty much, it's pretty much anybody's, you can spend whatever you want on a rifle anymore. You know, you can take it as far as you want to. Uh, again, with an MSRP of around 1600, you gotta look around and see if there's something that you could get that you might want. You know, something that might run you a little bit less that offers the same amount of precision, but I do see a tremendous amount of potential in this thing. And it barely moved when I would pull the trigger. I mean, it was it was an awesome rifle. So really guys, um, that's that's about it. Again, just talking about the specifications, what to expect. Should you buy one? I mean, heck, I'd buy one if I had the money. Heck yeah, I'll be happy to take any of them out and shoot them anytime people wanna loan them to me. Um, you know, it is confidence inspiring when you put some really good shots on paper and you see the potential for it, but you also have to understand your shooting conditions, your ammunition, and so on. Um, this, again, it's a very fun combination, and I think it's something that you can really enjoy. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think I give it uh, two thumbs up uh, all the way around. I've never had a problem with the Ruger firearm, and I do like their build quality, their, consistent, their consistency. And, uh, you know, I've never had an issue. We featured quite a few Ruger firearms on this channel before. So, guys, that is it. That's what I can tell you about the Ruger Precision Rifle chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, again, I, I tested it with the Hornaday, uh, sorry, the Hornady Superformance Ammo. I did actually dial it in and bring it to near zero with Remington Core Locked and was shooting some really good groups with that too. And then I finalized my zeroing with the Superformance just because the Core Locked was a lot cheaper. Uh, Core Lock, Remington Core Lock runs me about $18.99 at Walmart. Superformance, I had to order it. It was about $32 a box, not counting shipping. So it is a pricey little shoe, but it's definitely worth it. So yeah, guys, maybe think about going into this as your next uh, precision rifle. I think you won't be disappointed. Um, as for the optics, hey, I mean, it's 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 awesome. It's cool getting that laser rangefinder and having that trajectory dot, dot, dot show up uh, is, is really something to, to mess around with. I really did enjoy it. So anyway, guys, that's it. Thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks for checking out the video of the Ruger Precision Rifle chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, um, as well as the Burst Eliminator 3 scope, which is a 4 to 16 uh, by 50 powered scope, well, 50 millimeter objective lens. And otherwise, guys, that's it. So if you like what you see, please like or subscribe. And you can check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can also find me on gunchannels.com. Uh, I'm also over on GunStreamer and YouTube and GunTube.org. Uh, otherwise, I think that's about it, guys. So um, please like and subscribe, and uh, we will talk to you soon. So have fun, guys. Be safe. And as always, get out there and go do some shooting. All right. Bye-bye.